What is up everyone, Jay here as always, and today we're going to be continuing our playthrough of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, the trilogy, and we're still at the last case of the first game, which has been the longest damn case, let me turn that off, and yeah, we're uh, <laughs> hopefully finishing it today. At least I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> I want to be sure. But, we're going to start off right where we left off last night. Or the other night. Last night was Beat Saber. We've talked to her all about here. So now we could move. Not entirely sure where to go from here. But, yeah, we're going to go talk to her sister, I believe. February 24th, Detention Center, Visitor's Room. Lana, Lana Sky. La, La, Lana? Mr. Wright, it seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence. I didn't think you were the type. Criminals don't mind playing foul. Why should we? But Lana! If you're wrong, an innocent person might be found guilty. Believe me, I understand the risks. Lana, Emma told me about you. Oh? About how you were a detective two years ago. Hey baby, welcome to the stream. Well, hopefully we're going to be finishing this damn case. It's gone on way too long. And I really want to be done. And how the SL9 incident was the reason for your transfer to the prosecutor's office. That's right. Could you fill me in on the details, especially about the unusual change of jobs? I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. Oh, thank God. This is super loud in my ears, so let me turn that down. Thank you! A lot of revelations were uncovered at the trial today, and not the, not the least of which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen as well, though I expected as much. I know how obsessive Officer Marshall can be. That trial, it really wasn't fair, was it? I believed in you, Lana. I, I believed in that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. Ugh. It couldn't be helped, Emma. At that trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Well, all drama aside, the fact of the matter is, at 5.15, there was no murder at the police department. Tell me why it's not true. Uh, Lana... Of what the witness, Miss Starr, said. About you stabbing Mr. Goodman with a knife. Lana, I don't understand. Why won't you tell us? Emma, this doesn't involve just me. I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so phased before. Oh, hopefully we find out, honestly, what the hell's going on. It's true. I was a member of the police force two years ago. She was amazing! They still talk about all the cases she and Chief Grant cracked together. Chief Grant? He was the deputy chief of police back then, but he still worked the crime scenes. Damon Gant... He was everything I aspired to be. They were the best team ever! They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed. Emma really idolizes her big sister. But now you're chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming a prosecutor. And the reason I became a detective was... To gain experience investigating crime scenes, so you could use that experience in court, right? 
He can't help that the SO9 case was crucial to its resolution. After that, he became chief of police and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. Maybe I should ask more about this investigation of theirs two years ago. Maybe you should! Two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investigating Jane. Dark. Damn it. Second in command? That means the investigation lead was Damon Gant, right? Yes. Uh, Deputy Grant. Gant. And I shared the same office and the same investigations. They even had the same office. We led a team of the best detectives on the force. Detective Goodman, whose case it was, Jake Marshall and Angel Starr. It was the first time Marshall worked with his brother. He was quite gung-ho. Without a doubt, Joe Dark was the serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. That was when his final murder took place. When he tried to murder Emma. Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Dark. You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was me. Now you tell us. Damon Gant and Mel Mar Neil Marshall were the ones questioning Dark that day. The investigation was in the final stages and Dark must have suddenly panicked. So he waited until Gant and Marshall let their guards down, then fled the room. From there, he ran straight to the office shared by Deputy Chief Gant and myself. That's where he found me! So you were the first person to run into the scene, Lana? It appears so. I was filing some papers while Gant and Marshall were questioning Dark. Oh god. That, that knife kind of looks different than the one that we actually have in evidence. When I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Three bodies? Prosecutor Marshall, the victim, Emma, who had passed out, and the suspect, Joe Dark. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck a, fa a final blow before he died. Joe Dark had incurred a minor concussion and lay unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I panicked. Oh, of course, she's seen her sister on the ground, so uh, it's, it's understandable. I picked up Emma, carried her out of the room, and just held her. Can't blame her after all her sister must have gone through. After that, I placed the dark under immediate arrest. Let me get this straight. You were all involved in the SL9 incident. That's right. Quite a coincidence, hmm? I don't buy it. What are you saying? There's no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in that incident. Just by chance. But that case was solved two years ago! At least one person went to extremes because they didn't believe it was truly solved. Officer Marshall, yes, his actions came as a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he's changed completely. I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Dark. Life doesn't end with the closing of a case. Everyone has to live the rest of their lives with their memories. That case just might not be over yet. Oh? Emma was assaulted by Dre Dark at the police department, right? Yes, in the office that da Damon Grant and I shared. 
The office that Mr. Kent now occupies by himself, the chief's office. Maybe you should have a look at the office, chief's office, the site of the final SL9 murder. What would that do after two years though? Wouldn't that all been have cleaned up? I don't think we're gonna find any type of evidence there now. I mean, there's not much we could do. We talked to her, so... I, I guess we could go to Criminal Affairs? And see if we could actually look at the Chief's office, but... I don't really think that we're gonna be able to find anything after, you know, such a long period of time. I don't see Detective Gumshoe anywhere. Thing, things seem kind of quiet around here today. You, you're right. The chief has something to do with it. You you think so? Like, I thought that from the beginning, but... What can it obviously be? Oh, honestly be, should I say. I... Maybe he's, um... Blackmailing Lana for some reason? To keep his name squeaky clean? Or, um... I don't know. It, everything happened so weird with everybody after that case. Uh, Star got fired. Marshall was demoted to a security chief. Yo, what up, Black Fist? How you doing, homie? Thanks for joining the uh, stream, bro. Um, the only one that really stayed the same was Goodman. Gant ended up getting chief of police. And Lana Sky was moved over to the prosecutor's office, and she was, and she was deemed chief prosecutor. Do you think Gant is blackmailing her to control the prosecutor's office? Because that, that could that's like the only logical explanation. You're right. The chief of detectives seems to, uh, seems the same though. Why don't we go look for some other people to talk to? Right. Well, we can come back here later. We can't even... We can't... We can't get it. We can't even... <clears throat> this game kind of, like, ticks me off, honestly. <laughs> Something's not right, though. They were, like, fam... They were all were, like, family. And then this... I, I don't know. I'm hoping all of it comes to light soon because this case has really been ticking me off. But anyway. Oh. Howdy, Bambina. Oh, Mr. Marshall. I never thought things would turn out this way when I woke up this morning. Yeah, Trey, Sarah, Sarah. Y'all never know where life will lead you, eh, Bambina? I should have known my luck had run out when old Billy dried up this morning. Billy? It must be his pet cactus. Sir, where are you headed? Just over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance, but we all know I won't be coming back. Sorry, but you can't go in the evidence room today, partner. But, Mr. Marshall, why did you do it? Why do prosecutors head west? If ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about, it, it was that one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, would you mind telling us exactly what happened? Huh. Looks like I won't be getting a steak lunch today. Oh, he's actually gonna talk to us. Let's find out about this. There's something that was fishy about that trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me, either. All the detectives thought so. What do you mean, fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, as a murder weapon. A murder weapon? You mean that switchblade knife with the broken tip? That was Joe Dark's, alright. But, in the eternal autopsy report, a question was raised. A 
question. The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound the victim sustained. What does that mean? It means there is a good chance that knife was not the murder weapon. However, in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility had been erased. Could the facts have been concealed with forged evidence? That case left behind scars on all of us. The scars that the SL9 incident left behind. Oh, uh, this case just gets worse and worse. I got the looks, but he got the brains. He was one of the best prosecutors around. I had just made detective when it went down. It was our first case together. How old was he? Your brother? He was 27 at the time. He was awarded the highest honor that very day. The highest honor? You mean the... King of Prosecutors. I knew it! What are you looking at me like that for? Now that's an honor for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have really been close with his brother. The day the SL9 incident took place, that wasn't the same day as... That's right, it was the day of the evidence transfer. Interesting. It was dazzling that mo drizzling that morning, and by nightfall there was thunder. I can't believe two years have gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence so that case wouldn't die. Apparently someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered and the evidence locker was empty. <sighs> oh, let's find out more! Now, there was something going on behind the scenes in that case, so we all knew that later. Every detective involved in that investigation, save one, was taken care of. That's, uh, with all the demotions and the firing and stuff. Miss Dahl was fired and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about Detective Goodman? If they did something to him, too, the commissioners would get suspicious. No, they were careful enough not to be too obvious. They? Who were you talking about? Don't y'all get upset, Bambina. I mean, Damon Gant and Lana Sky. Oh, so... So Lana and Gant are the ones that made the call to, uh, demote and fire people off of this case, except for Goodman. But... Why was Goodman the one that was spared? What was... What was he to them? The investigation led Damon Gannon and his second in command, Lana Scott. Uh, there wasn't a person in the force who didn't hurt, who hadn't heard of that duo. That case was the biggest step in both of their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yup. Damon Gant, the new chief of police, arranged that to happen. She has never been the same since she left. Everyone knew. Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Sky was a totally different when she was a detective. Now that he mentions it, Emma said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sorry, Bambina, but her secret is too well guarded. I never found out. I'm a secret. It all started two years ago. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, Pagna? It was certainly enlightening. There is one thing for sure I found out in court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. That's true. 
Edgeworth didn't know about the falsified uh, evidence. He was the one who he used false, uh, falsified evidence to get the guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That someone is Damon Gant. And don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. Oh, this poor guy, man. Too bad I won't be around to work with you. When you become a real scientific investigator. Adios, Bambina. That sucks because... He he knew something was up. He really did. And now he's getting the axe for it. And he he might even do jail time, which which is bullshit. Um We could try back up there. See if anything's around. This place is always pretty empty, but today it's deserted. That must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. Oh. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Uh, thanks. Well, he actually talked to us. With the chief prosecutor saying what she did and the decision about what to do about Mr. Edgeworth and not to mention our statement to the media in tomorrow's trial. There's more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is the word usually used for those. Um, sir, we'd like to have a look around Chief Grant's, uh, Gant's office. Just use the connecting hallway to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Really? Y you mean it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything. Hey, you're right. You can't go in there. It's off limits. Now I see where Detective Gumshoe gets his unique charm. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head over. Let's head to the chief's office. I mean, I, I guess so. Oh, God. February 24th, police department. Uh, chief's office. Why the hell? Who the hell has a big ass organ in their office? Whoa, where am I? In the chief's office, silly. Uh, at least that's what it said on the door. Check out that pipe organ. It's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. Who the fuck the hell gives organ lessons in kindergarten? They used to call me Little Miss Batch. Bach, or whatever his name is. I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me notes. Oh, is she playing it? No, no, woman! I never could remember where C was. Mm hmm? Oh, it's you two! Chief Gant? He put that paper he was reading in his desk. Ah, righto! Ha er, have you been swimming lately? Uh, no, I haven't. I, I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've had my hands full too with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and Lana's provocative statement. Provocative statement. Oh, you mean about the forged evidence? Two years ago have passed since that incident. My, how time flies. <coughs> See that big picture in the wall over there? Yeah, the the award has a sword on it. Um, I think uh. Edgeworth ne didn't have a sword. Right? Yeah, Edgeworth don't have a sword. Yo, could that be the murder weapon? No, right? It it wouldn't it wouldn't be that obvious, would it? I 
I, I get right. I guess we'll find out. I mean, lots of picture of Lana, Nell, and me. So this is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecu Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Marshall. We took it to commemorate our work together. Something's not right with this picture. Isn't that the jar? That's the jar! Oh shit. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh shit, start to come down! Something's not right with this picture. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it though. Jantine picture added to the court record. Oh god, this dude's huge. Why? Anyway, I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm going to lock up here, so let's go out together. Oh, but this office, it was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? Oh, thanks for the host, man. Or, ma'am? Not entirely sure. I, I don't remember names well. I really don't. I apologize. That case has long since been over, and there's no need to investigate it anymore. All the same, we'd still like to have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Uh, now hurry up and get out. I have a meeting to attend. Well then, he doesn't want us to look around the office. Um, that's kind of fishy. Not gonna lie. So, and the paper... You love this case? Dude, this case has been pissing me off. It is so long and nothing at all makes sense. Nothing. <laughs> Looks like we aren't welcome. It seems that case isn't over with yet. After And what was the paper that he ended up hiding in his desk when we came in? Is that going to have something to do with the South Zone 9 case? Or anything with the current case that we're trying to figure out? What do you mean? Chief can't deny to request to search the crime scene. I don't know why, but it won't allow me to send you my biddies. Oh, really? That's weird. I do apologize for that. Then again, Twitch is, uh, twitchy. <laughs> but thanks, though, dude. It's, it's really the thought that counts, man. It's awesome of you. Chief can't deny a request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. I've killed the at twice. <laughs> Damn. Oh, man. Usually when I'm messing around with Twitch, I make sure I do everything on a PC. That way, I know if something screws up, it's my fault. <laughs> you mean like a clue? There's got to be a way we can get inside the chief's office. I mean... I don't exactly know how, but I guess we could check in here again. Right, 24, police station. Uh, ow! <laughs> hey, pal. Detective Gumshoe, aren't you supposed to be in a meeting? Um, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long? Actually... From serving everyone coffee. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe's still out of the loop. 
Okay, uh, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No, why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. Hey, girl, what's up? <laughs> Thanks for coming out. It's almost like the battles between you two in court. That sounds serious. Uh, I, I'm not singing nothing on Twitch, but you could hear me do horrible voices. For the most part. And some of them really kill my throat. <laughs> Is it because of what my sister said? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, this case uh, we're working on in this game annoys the living hell out of me, but pretty damn good. That's basically what it all boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes! Okay, let's let's talk it. Let's talk to a. Uh, But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Alana Skye is the guilty party here, isn't she? Regardless, a prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. Not only that, but as you know, there's been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor's kept him safe from those who don't like him. But now, with this... Uh, are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe. I know of four making enemies. Hey, Dick! Keep up the good work! Yes, sir. Let's go out for lunch again uh, sometime. My treat. Yes, sir. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay, Dick? Yes, sir. It seems you don't have any problems with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. Oh, Edgeworth is is kind of cracking, not gonna lie. This, this case has really hit him hard. And it... It hasn't been pretty whatsoever. Especially since he's the one being blamed for the falsified evidence, but he wasn't the one that, like, did anything to the evidence. He was given the evidence. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seems generally concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find out anything? The only evidence Dark left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... When he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. I... I don't know. Me? It seems Detective Gumshoe never realized Emma was the girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. What, what was it? As hey, welcome to the stream, everyone. Um, actually, awesome that you guys turned out. Thank you so much. Now, uh, y'all could be as confused as I am with this damn case. So thanks. Oh, um, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forgot. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? 
His powers of recollection are never fail to impress me. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. It might jog his memory. Uh, can we do that? Alright. We should, uh... Wait. Oh, hold on. Let's, uh, back out and consent. And a murder weapon. Uh, go, go. Um, about this. Hey! That's it! What up, Shion? <laughs> Welcome to the, uh... Most confusing case I've ever played. <laughs> it has a tag attached to it with the label SL9 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. And was found in Mr. Edward's car muffler. That's it! Now I remember what the incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again! Uh, okay. Uh, murder weapon. This knife. It was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he brought it at. Plus, it had his fingerprints on it, too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to notice that. Yeah, well anyway, take a guess where the broke off tip of the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim Nell Marshall was carrying it inside his own body. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Drake's Dark's knife? It's not Drake, Jake! <laughs> you bet. And down to the last fiber. That's pretty conclusive. <laughs> Neil's autopsy report added to the court record. Stabbed in the back, died from punctured heart and lung. A knife tip was in the wound. God damn, that knife wound sucked. Huh, switchblade knife updated. The broken tip was found in a victim's body belonging to mur murderer Joe Dark. Woohoo! Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. A businessman? What made him take to serial killing? One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So, it was an accident? An accident, yes, but it transformed him into an animal. I don't have anything against Drake, but I keep mispronouncing dude's name wrong. I do apologize. <laughs> also, I don't like Drake's music. An animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident. A, a, a kid walked by just then, so he killed him too. God damn it, why are you doing it on your own? A jogger came, came upon the scene and was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself. This dude killed one person after another. Jesus Christ. Seems he was pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in? Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone, too, but luckily, Dark was arrested on the spot. 
gonna hit up uh, work we're gonna hit up that lurk real quick thank you boss <laughs> go for it man it's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed that last witness aka Emma well there you have it in a nutshell that's all I know can I ask you one more thing what is it if it's money you need, you should go ask Chief Gant. It's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Nell Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out now, and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around if it's okay. Lady Detective ID cards can unlock the door. What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, it, I'd be charged with a breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. Oh. So in other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. We don't really have anything to show him. At least I don't think. Um. I mean, could we show him this or the pot? Uh. Let's show him that. About that jar, I think I've seen it before somewhere. Somewhere? Or maybe it's one of those memories people have from previous lives. This must be the most informative de detective I've ever met. Something about it makes me feel uneasy. It's like I'm in the chief's office and he's yelling at me. Chief Gant? Where could I have seen that before? Let me share a little advice with you as a detective. And we don't have a clue to keep him out. Ow. Huh. I don't... Maybe we gotta come back to him. Um... Let's... Let's move and... Go here. And maybe we could talk to, um... Edgeworth. 324, Prosecutor's Office Underground, Parker's Lot. No one's here today, not even Miss Star. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe Edgeworth could help us. Because, um... It, it seems like, uh... Like Gumshoe would do anything for that boy. So, I'm hoping. Everyone's probably busy looking into what exactly went down in the evidence room. That must be where the detectives are. But we proved in court today that on, on the day of the crime... No one was murdered in the evidence room at 5.15. Yeah, we we proved that it was earlier. Yeah, I thought we were finally making some headway in our case. But instead, it looks like we just ended up making Lana look even more guilty. Hang in there, Lana. I've got to find all the answers by tomorrow. We definitely do, because... That's when the last case, I believe, takes place. And we can end this goddamn case. <laughs> Hopefully. I really hope so. I wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is. It looks like he's writing something. What? What are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Tough day in court, huh? Hmm. 
I've had to live the past two years with rumors flying around. So what's another allegation to me? Cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm rooting for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. Uh, first we're gonna see what you threw on the floor, buddy. I wonder what he was writing before. Come on, Mr. Wright! Let's take a look! Are you crazy? Edward is sitting right there. Just distract him. I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Edgeworth! Is that Detective Gumshoe out the window there? Oh no, he's falling to the ground! That, that's not gonna work on Edgeworth. Hold on. First, let me see what this girl's doing crawling around my feet. He didn't even look. What? Letter of... Uh, uh. If you're having trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It says a letter of resignation. Oh, he's resigning! Why? Well, I know. I, I guess I can under... He has been under some fucking stress, let me tell you. Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean... I'm tired, right? I feel as if something inside me has died. But Mr. Edgeworth, none of it is your fault! I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. It's not your fault, homie. Uh, I think he's serious. M Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation, I wonder if I could use it for anything. I bet you we could give that to uh, Gumshoe. All right, let's uh, let's finish talking to him and go back to Gumshoe to see if he'll let us in the office to uh, look around. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I've used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I do can ease, erase that fact. But you didn't do it. You didn't know, did you? I mean, that the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error. My responsibility is the prosecutor in charge. The fact remains the same no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Edgeworth! I take pride in my work. So tell me why. Why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. Yeah, I feel so bad for the boy because it's not him doing it. I mean, Lana Sky confessed to the fact that she falsified evidence. So that should be on her as one of the lead detectives back then. I don't see how it falls on Edgeworth's shoulders. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Mm-hmm. First last year's trial, and now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial. Tomorrow is the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. No, that that's why my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? The list of evidence, it, se it seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists. Th that's odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. 
Use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that time. That picture, something seems strange about it. Oh, maybe we, uh, we show it to him. Maybe we'll have something to say about it. This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Gant's office. Hi, Mike. You got more sports, uh, scores to tell us? <laughs> Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes. The trophy Mr. Marshall was holding. It's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. Wait, no, we didn't find out if he did it yet. <laughs> ah, I remember now. Remember what? That was what the official prosecutor's trophy looked like until two years ago. There's a story behind this design. A story? It sounds interesting. W would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. What? Uh, let's find out about the day of the crime. Okay there, Mike. <laughs> Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered. You were participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? I've never cared for ceremonies, um, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this! Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning, and then drove over to the police department. We finished up at the office? Yes, just odds and ends, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Okay. Okay, this makes me think, um, let me run this by all of you still watching. If we look at the IDs, right, Miles Edgeworth came in at 440. That's when he went to go pick up the screwdriver because Gant wanted him to, right? Whoever 777, whatever, was, was the murderer, right? He was the one that killed... Goodman in the evidence locker room. So, with that, I'm go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that lucky number seven there is Gant's uh, police ID number, his uh, his card number, and he was the one that came in and killed Goodman. The reason he had Edgeworth go pick up the screwdriver was because it gave him time to put Goodman in Edgeworth's trunk. Making it so Edgeworth had to go from the police station all the way over to the prosecutor's garage. And when he did that, that's when Lana Sky, still covering for Gant, stuck that knife in Goodman's body. But Goodman had already been dead and stuffed in, uh, you know, Edgeworth's trunk. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that is what happened. Because it makes sense to me. Anyway, this. Oh yeah, Chief Gant asked you to hold on to it, didn't he? Yes, and it was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. 
that's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to. That's right. Okay. This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. Oh. The first means halberd, and the second means shield. Have you heard this story? Me? Oh, uh, sure. Everyone knows that. He was framed! I, I mean, he wasn't framed. He's not on trial. But, uh... I'm gonna go out and say Lana Sky is being used by Chief of Police Gant. Very well. Oh, it's story time, people! Long ago, in the Kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon. Hmm. Wait a minute. Objection! Those claims contradict each other! Very perceptive. But then again, you've heard this story before, right? Anyway, as you mentioned, the very description of these items discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless. And thus, the Chinese word for contradiction was born. Oh, I see! So, the chipped shield and broken knife symbolize... Precisely. So they symbolize... The merchant's items. Text me if you find out who did it. Uh, yeah, I, I get it, Mike. You don't like this game. You let me know for sure the other day. <sighs> there are more games than World of Warcraft. As the ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words. But it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion. Even if it results in something as ugly as this. Wow! Thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. I learned something new today. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You'll have to ask Chief Gant. Two years ago, he had the halberd part of the award abolished. Chief Gant. Everything points back to Chief Gant. Everything. So, alright, we're done talking to him. Let's go back to the police station. Excuse me. Oh, God. Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Miss Star! I guess she's out of lunches. You certainly are a curious sort, aren't you? And kind of like the first person who sucked a thousand nipples to discover milk. Why? Still, I never thought you'd be digging up that case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from that case was due for transferal. This can't all be attributed to mere coincidence. Aren't you forgetting something? You know that little scene I happened to witness? The instant Lana stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savored when eaten. Miss Star's hatred towards Lana. It all dates back to two years ago. Oh, let's see what this streetwalker, I mean, uh, <coughs> lunch lady has to say. Joe Dark. Uh, that's a name I'll not soon forget. We trailed him for a half a year. Oh, the pressure. 
Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gra- Why is gravy steamy? I mean, warm, sure, but steamy, no. Poor old Jake Marshall, though he must have been going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. Her? Lana Sky. My sister? Oh, the best of the best were put on the SL9 case. Of course they were led by the legendary duo. Lana and Chief Gant. Oh, Jesus. That legendary pal was the reason we were able to keep our investigation. And that's why we were so shocked over how it turned out. You mean with the forging of the evidence. Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found would suddenly appear while our other items were kept secret. But you don't have proof. Anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us, save Goodman, were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lona Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lona always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Lana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the evidence. Well, of the matter. She was being used. Okay. David Gant and Lana Sky. And Gant led the investigation with Lana second in command. They were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damon Gant's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? And by that I mean his ability to attract evidence. He had produced the most incredible evidence in the cases in the cases he handled. Incredible evidence? You mean... Oh, he has. There were rumors about him back then. No one dared confront him, though. I take it she's talking about forging evidence. Back then, everyone looked up to Lana. All the detectives wanted to be like her. R really? Oh, yes. Myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated everything crooked and always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall? When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would ever have recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infuriating. Miss Star... That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? Oh, shit. So, after all that, she turned cold. But, uh... Was it because she is being used, like Star is saying? Or what happened? What happened during that that incident is what we really need to find out. Hopefully we'll find that out soon. Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? 
P.S. Thanks to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief! That's right. Having solved the SL9 case, his position as Chief was secured. There was only one thing left for him to control. And then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office. What? You mean... That's why Lana was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But, but how, how could he control Lana? I don't know, but though things for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her change. At last. I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. I freaking hope so, Phoenix. Thank you, Miss Star. Will you listen to me, rookie? It takes more than just ingredients to create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I've been. Thank you for giving us a little more detail, but we're gonna go back to the police department and the criminal affairs, and we're gonna. Oh, you're. Oh, you're. <coughs> oh, you're back. You're still here? I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files. I'm turning into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. Oh, that DJ! I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer's still no. I'm not letting you into the chief's office, period. It'd be my neck on the line. That office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to take a look in there. There's gotta be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. There is, and we're gonna show him that. What's this crumpled up piece of paper? No, no, what, Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious. Is he ever not serious? I can't believe they've punished, pushed him this far. Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. When I first met him, I thought he was as cold as ice too. But I know different now. He trusted us detectives to provide him with the sound evidence. But we just... We betrayed him. Detective... That's it. I've made up my mind. But... Here, take my card. We can't do that. If someone found out, they wouldn't let you off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. Poor Gumshoe. I feel so bad for him. So at least let me do this for Mr. Edgeworth's sake. Alright, Detective. Thank you. Gumshoe's ID tucked swiftly in the pocket. Alright, now we can get into Gant's office. Let's do this shit and see if we can find any evidence which I don't know how we would because it's been two years. But, we're finally in Gant's office. Here goes, Mr. Wright. Click. Beep. And we're in where the big-ass organ is. Jeez, there's that, uh, statue. That, uh, armor. Yeah. We're in! If anyone finds us now, Detective Gumshoe is a goner. If that happens, I'm counting on you to bail me out. 
Eek! Ah! <laughs> oh, did she hit him again? Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I don't even know. I didn't even know you could slap a ghost. Uh, Detective Gumshoe. What are you doing sneaking up on us like that? Uh, I, I wasn't sneaking. Uh, I was just worried something might go wrong. So I came to. If you're here, then what's the point in giving us your ID card? What up, crazy? How you doing, homie? Hope all is good, man. How's your stream been? Hopefully, man. Uh, well, uh, so far so good. Just an annoying game, man. <laughs> if you're here, then what's the point? What's the point in giving us your ID card? Gumshoe's ID crushed and rendered unusable in pocket. Hey, don't do that to my card. <laughs> but let us let us investigate, goddammit. I hardly got a chance to come in here. So I figured I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. Y you really do want to get fired, don't you? Not if we're lucky. No, come on. Let's see what we can find out. I've got a bad feeling about this. There's one thing I want to check, and there's a safe. This is a safe, isn't it? A safe. That word is ripe with intrigue. Uh, okay, if you say so. It looks like a code needs to be entered into this panel to open it. Oh, what would a code be? Um, oh, dude, you know what? I'm gonna try the sevens. It, if this, if this works, then we know who's the one that did it. Do you know what it is? I have a hunch. Oh, I know. You want to try my birth date? It's... No, no, Gumshoe. We don't want to try your birth date, buddy. You... You simple-minded fuck. I have a better idea. Here goes nothing. Oh, come on. Oh! Oh, shit, it worked! Dude! Dude, that's him! He's the one that set all this shit up! It has to be! What number did you enter? Whose birthday was it, pal? 777777. Seven, 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 seven. The final ID card number on that record. What? The number of the mysterious executive officer who entered the room that day. It was him! I, I, I knew it was him! I told you, boo! You mean... 777777777? That ID number? Oh, well, wow. Lucky number seven. Right, Shion? Damn right, lucky number... Uh, maybe bad luck seven in this case, honestly. I think you're one seven shy this time. This can only mean one thing. That's Chief Gant's ID number. Say, anyone care to look inside? Uh, yeah, we got it open. Is there any money in there? How much does he have stashed away? D stop it with the money, man. Look, it's a, uh... A shard from a broken cup. No. No, that's the, that's the last piece of our pot. This somehow looks familiar. W where have I seen this before? We all know where we've seen it, dude. There's something else in here, too. 
What's this? It, it looks like a piece of leather cloth. With a handprint on it. We could dust that. This is a handprint, isn't it? Hey. I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once. Yo, we got it. Yeah, we do. We definitely do. You think the chief made up the design? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, well, it was just a thought. Is that it? This is all that was in the safe. Apparently so. It's empty now. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it and a broken shard from a cup. They look like pieces of evidence. Yeah, but unless you could prove they have something to do with this case. I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here. I bet that is the print that was white. Do you think so? I mean, that would make a lot of sense if that was. And it would definitely help us out once we go to trial with it. Great, now I have to prove their relevancy to them to get them. How are these two items related to the SL9 incident? Come on, there's got to be something we can show the detective. It definitely is. Uh, it happens to be that. Detective Gumshoe, can you have another look at this jar? Oh, I remember when the three of us put that back together. Oh, <laughs> those were the days. It's kind of early to be nostalgic. Wasn't this jar a piece of evidence from that case? That's right. One of the shards had an SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know, the fragment we just found? Oh, you mean this one? That was in the safe. Yes, that one. That was in the safe. Now that you mention it, it's ringing a lot of bells. Let's see if it fits. Assemble fragments. Ah, oh, that's it. Do it. Here, let me see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Go ahead, pal. Show us what a rookie could do. Mr. Wright, here's some glue. If I could piece this together again, it'll prove Chief Gant was knowingly hiding evidence. Here goes. That bastard definitely was hiding evidence. Uh, rotate. Oh. Uh, and combine. Oh. Oh, we have the whole jar. Oh, OMFG, Gumshoe, you're so sweet, but fuck, damn it. <laughs> Yeah, Gumshoe's so simple-minded. He's a good guy, though. Like, I like Gumshoe. There, it fits like a charm. That, of course, means... Chief Gant willingly and knowingly hid a piece of this jar in his safe. But why? In other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. But... Hey guys, get a load of this. What is it? This piece you just attached. It's different from the others. Oh, uh, it's got a lot more blood on it. There's a reddish line on it. A reddish line. That's blood. I don't get it. Why would Chief Gant hide this in his safe? Evidence from the SL9 incident. Final fragment found in Chief Gant's safe. Blood traces. Um. Maybe we should check it out. Hey, look. Here, it's hard to make out, but there's a dark red stain here. Hmm. Looks like blood. This piece the chief has, it's different though. 
The blood stains on the other pieces are just spots. But this one's a line. That is odd. Does that not look like it's trying to spell something? It, it honestly looks like it's... I don't... I don't know what, but... Who knows? I don't know, but, uh... I want to finish examining first. Um... First things first. Maybe we could use this crap. Because he was... Yeah. Yeah, he was murdered around there. I hope you don't get jumped like last time. Oh, we do have to look in his desk. Well, let's look at the blood first. Oh, this area must have been covered in blood. Is this from the that incident? It must be when Prosecutor Nail Marshall was murdered. Two years have passed, so the, the reaction's kind of dull. So a murder really did take place here. Anything happened on that organ? Okay, uh... I don't know why I did that. I could have just... Wow, look at the size of Chief Gad's desk! Speaking of that, when we were here earlier... Oh! It's you two! Chief Gant! He put that paper he was reading in his desk. I wonder what he was reading. This looks like a list of evidence. Alright, homie. That'd be cool. We'll stop by and grab the uh, link. Unless Libby, you want to grab the link now and uh, share it to me over on Facebook. A list of evidence. Oh, God. In most cases, the list runs twice as long as this, though. Hey, look at this case name. Huh? SL9 incident. I wonder what this is doing here. Oh, hold on, Detective. What did you just say? I said I wonder what... No, about evidence list. Normally, they're twice as long? That's right. I guess there wasn't a lot of evidence. Thank you, Boo. Oh, welcome back, Blackfist. A uh, half-size list of evidence. Uh, oh. <clears throat> uh, the list of evidence, it seems too short. A most list one twice as long. What would the other half of the list be doing here? I knew it! The Chief must be hiding something about that case! It would appear so. Evidence list added to the court record. Uh... Yeah. This is the real deal, isn't it? This armor and these weapons. Sitting here making this chicken alfredo, I started cooking way too late. That sounds good though, dude. I mean, that chicken alfredo is kind of awesome. And I got a itchy ass knee. Why? Show <laughs> uh. sure is, pal. The chief doesn't care for imitations. First the pipe organ, now this armor. Do you know how many taxpayer dollars must have gone into this room? What? You mean we're paying for this? You the emote come up like that? Oh, why the emote? I have no clue, man. F 
FOMO the rock? <laughs> oh, that's great, though. That's it. I'm not paying one cent of my taxes. You don't have any taxes to pay. Sheesh, be careful of what you say. Who knows, the chief may be hiding in this armor as we speak. I don't think he'd fit in there. Even if he did, he'd never be able to get back out. Cut it out. You guys don't know how scary that guy can be. Uh, poor Gumshoe is so scared. That desk on the other side of the room, was that your sister's? Yes, that's where I was waiting for Lana. On that day two years ago. Is anyone using it now? No, sir. This is entirely Chief Gant's office now. He practices a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. That's a strange reason to leave it there. He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us so himself at our New Year's party. Of course, he was pretty intoxicated at that time. I see. So ever since Lana left, no one ever touches that desk? No one except for Chief Grant and the cleaning lady who's in here each morning. Still, two years have passed since that incident. There can't possibly be any remaining clues. Uh, we found blood, I mean... Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came here to look around, right? Because it's one of the SL9 crime scenes? I mean, that's your only reason for coming here, isn't it? Why do you ask? You don't think... No, you wouldn't be... No. No, there's no way... Never... Don't worry about it. Uh, okay. Now then, let's look around a bit more. Hey, hold on. Not so fast, buddy. Huh? What is it? When someone tells you, don't worry about it, it's supposed to start bothering you, pal. You don't just let it go at that. S sorry this guy's starting to get on my nerves. Okay, so what's bothering you? You two don't think Chief Gant might be a suspect, do you? What? He's right, Mr. Wright. What do you think of him? Chief Gant. So it's finally come to this. What do I think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings yet. There you go, ignoring me again. Um, I'm so sorry, man. But I don't exactly know what to, uh, tell you. Oh, shit, what? I wonder what this is. It looks like someone drew some kind of sketch here. What is it? Did you find something? I can't make it out. I'd better keep quiet about this now. Uh, oh, no, it's nothing. Why are your eyes moving about like that, Mr. Wright? Right? I better not forget about this picture. Yeah, it's, it's not. Um... Do we pres... That's what the chief was reading before, isn't it? You know, when we first came in here? Yeah, it looks like the right side of the form's been torn off. So Mr. Edwards' list really was only half the whole thing. Something else is bugging me more than that. Take a look at the back of this form, pal. 
in the back. Yeah, we... we we've seen the back already. Maybe we have to do it when he says. I don't know what this is. Okay, now what? Then we present it to him. Now? So this bug me. Okay, well then. Do we finish examining things? Wow, look at the size of Chief Gan's desk. We found this inside the drawer. A list of evidence from the SL9 incident. Mr. Edgeworth had the other half of that list. What would this list be doing here? We better look a little more into this list. There's just nothing else to look except for that. I, it doesn't let me do anything. Alright, let's uh... Examine what we can. The Chief's organ sure is a sight of behold. Occasionally we hear him playing it from the Criminal Affairs Department. That's on the second floor, and this is the 15th floor of the entirely different building. When the detective screws up, the chief calls them to his office and makes them listen to the organ for hours. What's so bad about that? Music soothes the soul. After that, the detective can't hear anything for days except for the ringing in their ears. So it's an instrument of punishment, literally. But aren't the chief's ears affected? He never listens to anyone anyway. <laughs> the, yeah, that's besides the point. All right, look at that giant window. It makes you want to crash through it and jump outside. Ah, uh, this is the 15th floor. I know, I was just saying. Saying what? Ever since Make a Detective, I've always dreamed about doing something like that. Note to self, Detective Gumshoe has a lot of dreams. So long as he doesn't go crashing through that window. When he gets fired. Don't say that! Yeah, you're kind of a dick, Phoenix. These shelves are mostly empty. Lana must have cleaned them out when she transferred over to the prosecutor's office. There's a small picture frame on the left shelf. Hey! This is when Lana and I went to that theme park. Okay. This was Lana's desk. It sure is tidy. Lana's always been a meticulous cleaner. There's not even any dust on it. Looks like someone still keeps keeping it clean. Does Lana ever come back here? No. Chief Garrett must still keep it clean in memory of their partnership. They were the stuff of legends are made of. Does he keep it in memory of her or in memory of the crime? That, that would kind of be sick, honestly. What about his window? You can see pretty far from 15 stories up. If you were to drop that suit of armor from here... At first, the chief wanted to use stained glass windows. Really? Why didn't he? They say he changed his mind because he wouldn't be able to see the view. Oh! Stained glass or not, it's a huge window. It, it really is. I don't know what else I could... There's this, but... We already looked at that the last time. This was taken on the day two years ago. The day Joe Dark ran into the questioning room and tried to kill Emma. If 
After receiving his award trophy, Mr. Marshall took a picture here. Then went along with Chief Gant to question Dark. I bet he never knew he'd be dead just a few hours later. Gee, you think? Yeah, I mean... What else is there to do? We talked to him about everything. Um... Detective Gumshoe, I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, uh, I, I know what this is, so you want to take some fingerprints? That's a great idea, Detective! Alright, go to town, sheesh. Uh, what are you do why are you sticking your hand out like that? Go ahead, take my fingerprints. Ah, uh, um, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Huh? Come on, this isn't time for jokes. We're talking about that cloth we found in the safe. Oh, huh? I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humor? Uh, yeah, we're wasting time. We're not supposed to be here. Okay, Mr. Wright, let's check for prints. Sprinkling the powder on the cloth. Then once they've been absorbed into the prints, blow the rest away. What are you, my mom? I don't have to be told a million times. Alright, let's get on with this. Um... I don't know. I would guess this would be the best one. Let's check for the prince. Da -da 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 -da. This... Oh! Probably Mr. Gantz. Or not. Uh, no. No. Close, but no cigar. No. Uh, why is it Emma's? The print on that is Emma's. What the hell did he have something to do with her prints for? Why was he keeping something with her prints on it? No, how can this be? What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? Hey, you found a match? Whose fingerprints were they? Huh? Oh, uh, it seems the prints are too old. They aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be dark sprints. Uh, hey, over here. What's going on here? What are that kid's prints doing inside the chief's safe? Don't ask me. Let's just keep this information from Emma for now. <clears throat> here, maybe you should hold on to this. Uh, a weird twist. Gumshoe is wasting time on purpose. Oh, don't say that. That'd be so bad. Well, was I any help? Of course. Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. Now, that's very kind, is it? <clears throat> In other words... If it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Ah, oh, fuck. Ah, oh, this ain't good. Shion, why do you have to say anything? <clears throat> Isn't that right? You in the coat? Uh, Chief God? <laughs> we didn't think you'd be back so soon. Unfortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. In signs? Wow. Uh, oh, Gumshoe was sticking. <clears throat> As I was walking to meeting, my meeting, I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run into a pole. 
But just then I thought of a certain detective. Do you mean me, sir? Now then, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, sir. Sorry. Oh, you in the coat. Uh, me, sir? Drop off your ID card on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. Uh, but sir... Oh... No, get out. Y y yes sir. Oh, he just fired poor gumshoe. We'll be on our way too then. Oh, wait. You, the one without the spiky hair. Don't go yet. M me sir? I'd like a word with you. But sir, I'm not a licensed scientific event. You, with the spiky hair, you're free to go. R R Mr. Wright! Oh shit, dick much? Right? Oh, he kept Emma! Look, pal, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. The chief's office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I don't think you were right. I think it was just a bad coincidence. I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said that. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding, I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. But why has she kept eerily silent about it all this time? Anyway, you listen to me. I'm gonna try to smooth things over with the Chief again. Later, pal. After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police wanted to ask her some questions. So she'll be busy for the rest of the day. Oh, wow. February 24th, Detention Center, Visitor's Room. I see. So the Chief asked Emma to come for, for questioning. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all I can. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I finally figured it out. I know who it is lurking behind your words. Mia did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? But once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick-headed is the term he used, I believe. Now's our chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story. Talk, woman! Give me something! I have to admit, I was more than a little perplexed at first. You insisted you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say. So you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No. I think afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, 
whom, may I ask, is this person you're speaking of? The one I am supposedly so frightened of. Right there! Well, Miss Sky. Mr. Wright, you are addressing the Chief Prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about what you think you know? Oh yeah! Oh yeah, we can! We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Assuming he is respectable, then tell us, tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of... Oh, God. Inquiry for what you did. Specifically hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offenses. Why is it, though, that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? <coughs> I got the freaking hiccups. Oh, God. Excuse me. Edwards didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly tampered with the evidence was... Me. I had access because I was second in command of the investigation. God damn it. Cubs? Yes, you. But also one other, Damon Gant. If you intend to access Chief Gant, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence in that case. Um... I, it would be this, or this? I'm gonna go with this. I just found this in a safe in Chief's office. This jar piece and this piece of cloth. <coughs> Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. God damn it, hiccups! Oh, they're still there. Damn it! I. The person concealing evidence was none other than the Chief Gant himself! Now tell me, why are you taking all the blame for him? It's like I'm skipping. Ugh. Touche, Mr. Wright. It's as you surmised, I cannot disobey the Chief's orders. Even if it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Ugh. Come on now, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. In the murder of Detective Goodman. Or perhaps, I should s say, follow orders. Yes, that's more accurate than cooperate. Oh, I'm so sorry about these hiccups. Ah, God damn it. <coughs> Although, I can't tell you the details. I can say that I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it inside the trunk of Miles Edwards' car. Jesus. Just as I suspected... Despite what everyone believes, you were not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Ugh, correct. Ugh, I was trying to take the body out of Edward's car. The trunk's lock was broken, and I discovered the murder that murder weapon while inspecting the body. Shop, Shion! <laughs> Don't laugh at me because of my hiccups. 
Ugh. Damn it. Uh, the murder weapon, you mean Edward's knife? No. When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. The knife from the SL9 incident. Serial killer Joe Dark's knife. I couldn't just leave that knife in him. So I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. And that would be Edward's knife. That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. And that's why I ended up cutting my hand. And that is the reason... Ugh, for the bandage on your right hand. Yes. It seems that I got blood on the victim's shoes as well. Ugh. And then... She saw me just as I plunged the knife in it. Miss Star, huh? Oh, we're getting some good info here. And why did he need to hide Dark's knife so badly? It took a lot of work finally to finally close the dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want to be. I didn't ever wa want it to be opened again. My intent was to prevent that by whatever means possible. So, you hit Dark's knife. God damn it! The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. <coughs> so you wrap the knife in your scarf and hit it. In Edward's exhaust pipe. Alright, then I called my sister. To tell her what happened and ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. Which was inside Edward's... Edward's muffler. You asked Emma. I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. Has anyone seen the fact the chair doesn't spin just her? Yeah. Yeah, I've I've noticed and I mean the whole game has been odd, so I didn't bother questioning it questioning it. What I'm questioning right now is these fucking hiccups, they need to go. Uh, that would explain why Emma is so conf confident about Lana's innocence. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling? The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to a patrolman Jake Marshall. To Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the SL9 incident had been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden, and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or at least, I thought I could trust him at the time. However, it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on an escapade of his own. Oh, you mean, not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Detective Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already stolen the ID card, but it seems he still hadn't made up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had he had must have disappeared. So when your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room. Well, one of the incidents is at least. <laughs> now, now I'm gonna notice the chair not turning at all. Thanks, Bo. <laughs> I'm afraid that's all I could tell you. But Lana, you've earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. 
I'm just glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> no, you're not, boo. Tomorrow's child. There's only one way to drive off Lana's demons. I've got to get to the bottom of everything. We really do. Detective Goodwin's a real murderer. It, it's got to be Gant. It has to be Gant. And what went down in the chief's office two years ago? To be continued, and we're just about at the two-hour mark, so... You know what that means, people. We're gonna save... And we're gonna continue this on Tuesday? Because I have a feeling that it's, it's gonna be another two to three hour thing. Yes, boo. What, 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 what? Uh, I'm gonna make sure I have a couple of saves. I'm waiting on you, honey. But in the meantime, we'll pick somebody to, uh... Raid key time? Who's that? Okay. Key to Lime? Who, uh... What's his whole thing? What's he playing? Minecraft? Bomber Crew? What? I don't think I have him. Just like that? I'm sorry if I yelled in that mic. A bomber crew he's playing. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, raid him. Well, he might be new, but he's getting his first raid from us. Well, it might not be his first raid, but uh, we're going to raid now and I'll meet you guys over there as I shut everything down. And bye bye guys. Thank you all for uh, coming out and all that nifty jazz. I really do appreciate everyone coming here, so... Yay!